Good morning, and welcome to First Christian Church here in Lansing. I'm so excited to see you all this Sunday after being gone a couple of weeks. Um, and those that are joining us online, I can't see you, but hi, you can see me, and I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Um, just a few reminders that we go through every um, week that we aren't passing the plate. So there is a plate out in the narthex where you can leave your offerings. That's also where you can leave the prayer requests. Um, there are yellow cards in the back of your pew if you need to use those to write down those requests so they can be addressed during our prayer time today. If you're off singing, did you feel the mountains tremble? Followed by thy word. So please feel free to stand if you are able and join us in praising God through song.
The call to worship this morning is Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Can I have the kids come forward? And actually, I have kind of a weird, a weird thing. Do you, do you all have phones or anything that you can use as a phone? Or do you have parents who so can use their phone? Huh? Not with you? Okay, I can use mine. Or Okay, Sadie, so you got yours? Yeah, if you have a phone you can use, that's great. Okay, I've got some slides up here. And so the first one, if, if parents want to, you can, um, you can participate in this first question. I don't know. Um, yeah, when, whenever they get up there. Um, I just have some, so I know that a few of you guys were here on Friday, and we had a big meeting with our church, and we're kind of planning, like, you know, how um, we are going to best serve our community and be the best church we can be, right? Um, and one of the things that I know that was expressed by the kids was some kind of, uh, you know, constructive criticism about the children's moment. And so for me, I thought, what a great chance to get your feedback. So what I'd really like is for you guys to tell us some stuff. And if you're online, you can participate as well. And like I said, the first question, adults, you can participate too. I just want to make sure that you guys can make this work. Um, so what I'd like you to do is if you can open a browser, and if you don't know how to do that, let me know or somebody around you can help. Do you guys need a phone? Run and grab it. Okay, go get yours. Yeah, and if you're, yeah, if you're in here, you can do it. If you're online, you should be able to do this too. Open a browser window and go to, uh, does it say it at the top? Go to menti.com. It's M-E-N-T-I dot com. Do you have the number for me too? <laughs> Hoping this works. Have you got it? <laughs> Oh, whoops. <laughs> M E N T I dot com. Yeah. And if anybody needs a phone, I can I can pull mine up. Okay. Who's, oh, okay. Can I help you? Okay, that's fine. Yep. Here. So just open a window here. Go to M E N. Ti.com. Go. Okay. Do you need help, Wendy? Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> M-E-N-T-I.com. Go. Okay. So it takes a minute to set up. I'm hoping this will be worth it. Okay. Are you all there? Does every Does anybody else need help? It won't load. Are you connected to the Wi-Fi? Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe disconnect from the Wi-Fi. <laughs> there we go. Maybe that'll do it. Yeah, there you go. Okay, and so there's a number. See the code up there? So the number you want to enter, so there's a place to enter a number. The number you're going to enter is 2491-3893. So enter that number where there's a space to enter it. So there's two, two things I'm going to have you do. This first one is really just to make sure you guys are in there and know how to do it. So vote for your favorite season. We've got... Uh, early lead for fall. <laughs> oh, the number, okay, so it's 2491, let's see. Here, let me make sure. 2491-3893. Okay. Okay, so you can pick which one is your favorite and then hit enter or submit, whatever it says at the bottom there. Um, yeah, we got 13 people voting, that's great. Uh, so, yeah, it looks like nobody, okay, one person loves winter. <laughs> we got some winter love. <laughs> That's you? You like winter? Nice. Oh, we got a couple. All right. So, okay, great. It looks like we know how to use this. Okay, did you guys all vote? You did? Okay. So, awesome. So, Kat, can you bring us to our next one? So this next one, I just, this one is a word cloud. So what it is, is you're just going to type in words. And I just want to see stuff and like anything you can think of that's appropriate for church that would make, make church more engaging for you guys. Like if you're like, I want to have donuts at church, put donuts in there. You know, whatever you can think of, any word you can think of, if somebody puts in a word twice, it'll get bigger. So think about things that you would like to see in church that would make you want to come to church. You know, if it's more fellowship time or, you know, something, just put 
put whatever comes to mind. Games, that's, that's a good one. Um, what's that? Oh, this one's for the kids. Yeah. So I really want to hear from the kids on this one. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. But if you think of something, anything that comes to mind, if you see something up there you like, put it in there too because it'll just get bigger. <laughs> what do we got? Oh, yeah. Okay. So we got some. Uh, <laughs> I think there might be some adults that are participating. So that's okay. But I really want to see what the kids want. So because we'd like to make sure that you guys want to come to church. We want you to want to come here, right? <laughs> yeah, I feel, yeah, the more seriously you take this, the, the better it will be. I was really hoping that, that you guys could give us some really honest thoughts. And it's okay, you know, if it's like, you know, anything you can think of. But I will just give you guys a few minutes to enter. And you can enter more than one word. You can just keep going as long as you want. Um, but we'll give it a minute here. Yeah. Yeah, if you see something you like, I said this, but if you see something you like, put it in again. It'll just make that word bigger. So. Um, porcupine, this is an interesting one. Uh, that one's kind of light. It's kind of hard to see. Ty, can you bring the lights down just a little bit? Sorry, it's kind of hard to see some of them. This is really good, though, you guys. I like to bacon. Yeah? Bagels. Puppies. Puppies. Puppy church. I like it. <laughs> Yeah, but this is really good, you guys. And, and, you know, I'll leave this open so you guys can keep putting words in all the whole time we're here. If you think of something else, put it in. Um, and we'll just keep it going. Um, so if you're online, it, I'm going to keep it open. So go ahead and keep entering words if you think of them. So, um, so that's really all I was going to have you guys do today. And I really appreciate your participation and taking it seriously. So thank you very much. And now uh, we are going to have special music with the choir. And I'm going to head back there and completely transform. And you won't even recognize me.
It's now time for our stewardship moment. And I want to take a minute to kind of visualize what stewardship is. What do we have? Who, who has an idea of what stewardship is? It can be many things. Jeremy. Stewardship is management. He said that stewardship is management where if you have a, a company or you're working for somebody that you need to manage the assets of that company, okay? Well, the, f <coughs> the one thing that everyone thinks of is money. I mean, that's... What, what I'm up here trying to talk about is the church needs some money. <laughs> that is just an ongoing thing, all right? But <clears throat> there are many ways, other ways that you can, that you can <clears throat> do stewardship for God. I know that we have loaves and fishes that we take um, once a month, all right? That's a form of stewardship because it's helping the homeless shelter, one of the homeless shelters here in Lansing, okay? Teaching, okay? We, we're always teaching other people because we may see how to do something better, and if we let them know, they can learn it and do it later. Doug. Faithful servant. Faithful servant. Okay. Um, one, of the, one of the things that, that Doug happens to do as a faithful servant comes in uh, April. You want to expound on that a little? It's, it used to be called Christmas in April, and now it's rebuilding together. And it's where we go and work on a house for somebody who is less advantaged and wouldn't be able to have it done otherwise. Okay. There are many ways. It might be you see somebody that needs to talk. And you can listen. It might be someone at the grocery store who's four foot ten and can't reach <laughs> up here. <laughs> and you just reach it down and, and give it to them. There are many ways that you can be the hands, the feet, the ears, and the mouth to serve our Lord. It is also Reconciliation Sunday. That's uh, one of our special offerings for the year. If you'll pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you will bless us so that we can pass that on to other people. Sometimes that kind word we say, just kind of flippantly, might change the life of somebody. Sometimes if we just spend a minute listening as somebody 
expounds on their troubles. It might help them to see it from a different perspective. Lord, we ask that you would bless all of the things that we do in your name. Amen. And now our scripture. Our scripture, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> our scripture this morning is uh, Romans, Romans 5, 2 through 4, and 12, 2. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us to the grace in which we now stand, and we confidently and joyfully look forward to the day on which we will become all that God has intended. But not only that, we even rejoice in our afflictions. We know that affliction produces perseverance, and perseverance, proven character, and character, hope. Don't conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your minds so that you can judge what God's will is, what is good, pleasing, and perfect. And now we're going to have a message from Karin. Good morning. Will you please pray with me? Holy Creator, we thank you for bringing us all into this space together. This beautiful, beautiful sanctuary with the sunlight shining through the windows in the early morning hours. We know that wherever two or more are gathered, there is love, and we feel your love wrapping around each and every one of us. Please be with us this morning as we receive the message, the news update, as it were, and help us keep open hearts and open minds as we continue the conversation of how to make sure that blanket of love that we feel is wrapped around this entire community. In your name we pray, amen. So I have to be honest with all of you, this weekend was not relaxing for me. Um, normally I'm one who has an idea of my servant ahead of time, I've got it mapped out and I've got, it's all together, it's all one big cohesive plan. Um, but it was really important to me that I keep an open mind on this morning's message through um, the New Beginning program meetings that we had this weekend. So uh, <laughs> I stayed up late last night, so bear with me if I misspeak at all. Um, on top of that, uh, this weekend we celebrated my redhead wild child middle kid's 12th birthday. Happy birthday, Sadie. <laughs> I spent over eight hours here this weekend training with our facilitator and coach from the New Beginnings program. It started out Friday night with slightly more than two hours and over 20 of our church's participants. Thank you so much to all of you who were able to make the time to be here Friday night. Then yesterday, I spent close to seven hours together with the leaders from our congregation who have willingly agreed to facilitate the coming Holy Conversations. Thank you to those of you who have agreed to give your time to lead these very important conversations. So while I would love for today's sermon to be profoundly moving and inspiring, going viral on multiple platforms and bringing flocks of new disciples through our doors just to be in a place of such transcendence, instead I'm actually going to update you on the highlights of this weekend's meetings and help us all prepare for this transformative journey. So first, let me repeat that we are about to embark, embark on a journey of transformation, not a journey into imagination, although I do believe imagination will have a pretty important role in the following conversations. How else are we going to make a bold decision if we don't think outside the box and use our imaginations? But our transformation will need more than just imagination. We need patience. The monarch's egg hatches in a mere four days, but it takes two weeks and five stages of growth that includes shedding old skins before it enters into a chrysalis. Even then, it takes more than two weeks of truly and completely changing form before the butterfly emerges and spreads its wings. Jesus was a model of patience for us all. 
still teaching his disciples how to be men of God, even as he sat in the garden awaiting his persecution. Time and time again, he had to remind his disciples, all are children of God. All are welcome in the kingdom of heaven. Every time he healed, every time he touched, every time he visited a home, he had to remind them again, we are all children of God. I know for my own part, having to remind my kids anything more than twice tests my patience. (laughs) Even Jesus' transformation from earth to heaven was not instantaneous. But instead, it was three days before he revealed himself as risen anew. Now, way, way back, many centuries ago, not long after the Bible began, (laughs) thank you, a young man named Joseph had to let go of everything he knew in order to reach his dreams. Joseph first saw his potential when he was only 17. But in order for him to achieve his dream, he had to let go of his family He had to let go of his freedom, not to mention a pretty cool coat. It wasn't until he was 30 years old that he became counselor to the Pharaoh, ruler of Egypt. Transformation does not happen in haste. The series of conversations to come are designed specifically to give us time to dwell in the idea of change, to shed our old form and grow our ideas of new life. We need to use that time to reflect to pray, and to take each step one at a time. We also need to stay focused. The program is called New Beginnings, Not Old Grievances. (laughs) It's time to put our days of lamenting the past behind us. As Jesus said, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of heaven. The holy conversations that we are going to have take a lot of time and emotion. While we acknowledge that our past brought us here, we have to let it go so we can use our time to explore the possibilities that our future might hold, even though right now we feel like we're stepping into the unknown. They're not even paying attention. (laughs) Now I'd like to share a video that some of us viewed Friday night, and if you already saw this Friday, please just keep quiet. But I think it demonstrates to us both the importance of staying focused and of letting go. We'll see if it works. No. Count how many times the players wearing white passed the ball. I hear some murmurs. The correct answer was 16, but did you spot the gorilla? For people who haven't seen or heard about a video like this before, about half of them missed the gorilla. If you knew about the gorilla, you probably saw it, but did you notice the curtain changing color? Or the player on the black team who left the game? (laughs) I see a few surprised faces. We don't need to rewind and watch it again. You You can turn it off there. Oh, we kind of watch it in reverse anyway. All right, still do. So, obviously, there are some lessons here. First of all, if you were holding on so tightly to that idea that you had to count the white players passing the basketball, you probably missed some of the other things going on, right? We need to let go. We need to let go of all of our expectations for the future. We need to let go of all of our preconceived notions of what church has to look like. We just need to let it go and open, walk into this experience with an open mind. But we also need to stay focused because if you weren't paying attention, you were missing things. (laughs) 
Or if you were paying attention in the wrong places, you were missing things. So we need to make sure that we're staying focused on the future and not on our past. It is also imperative that everyone with an interest in the future of this congregation participates in these holy conversations and that their voices are heard. Friday night, I'm so thankful that we had some of our youth here and they were brave enough to speak up and participate in the conversation with us. Everyone needs to have a voice in this, but that means that you need to make this a priority. So let me lay out for you the timeline of what's to follow, and don't worry, you don't have to take notes right now. This is all going to be in the newsletter coming out next weekend. We're going to put it up on our website. We're going to put it up on Facebook. And for some of you, we'll even make sure to put a copy in the mail. So next week, we're going to publish the dates for our small group meetings. This is a series of four meetings that will take place throughout November and December. We're going to do our best to offer a variety of days and times and locations. We even are going to host a group online. After we've published all of the dates for all of the various meeting times and locations, every participant interested in the future of this congregation will be asked to sign up for the meeting dates that best fit their schedule. Now we've talked with a couple of different people in the New Beginnings program, and I think the general consensus yesterday is that while certainly there is um, some camaraderie that happens when groups stay together, it is more important that every voice is heard. So for session one, choose the date that fits you best, that you know you can commit to. For session one, two, choose the date you know you can commit to. For session three, choose the place and the date that you know you can commit to. If it means you're jumping between leaders, that's okay. We want your voice to be heard. After a week of signups, and again, we're going to put those up in multiple places digitally, on paper, in person. We'll, we'll have as many ways to sign up as possible. After we have those signups out for about a week, the small group leaders and I are going to get together and make sure that attendance is more or less evenly distributed. Um, I encourage people who have multiple availabilities to pl put them both in the sign-up so that we can shift people around if we need to. Ideally, groups should be no more than 10 to 12 people. Smaller is okay, but we really don't want them so big that not every voice can be heard. So the small group leaders and I are going to make sure that all of the groups are kind of evenly distributed attendance-wise, and then we're going to connect with each and every person who signed up and make sure that you know what dates, times, and places you're going to be participating in these conversations. Then the real work begins. In our first session, we're going to focus on understanding the marks of a vital congregation. Friday night, some of us got to lay a little bit of this foundational work. One of the most fascinating things that was shared with us Friday is that churches used to be able to sustain themselves off of 30 members. But now... The average congregation needs at least 130 people to sustain salaries and buildings and insurance and all of the things. That's a big change. So we're going to spend that whole first session talking about all of the things that mark a vital congregation today. Not when our congregation was founded 110 years ago, but today. Prior to our second session, so at the end of the first session, every participant is going to get a copy of our assessment report. Earlier this summer, Paul and Kim Kelly and I met with our assessor, Reverend Steve DeFields Gambrell. He came, he spent a whole evening with us, he walked through our building, through our finances, we drove around our community. He's put together a 75-page report that lays out judgment-free exactly where our congregation stands, where it stands with our financial resources, with our human resources, where we stand in comparison to our community. So prior to our second session, we are going to host a congregational meeting. And anyone who is interested, who's having trouble understanding that report, is encouraged to join us. Anyone who's a data nerd, and knows how to interpret some of this stuff, is encouraged to join us. And we're just going to spend an hour or maybe even two just really unpacking 
all of the data in that report. Um, yesterday, our small group leaders, we spent as much time as we could on it and we barely scratched the surface. There's a lot of really rich information in that report. So prior to our second small group sessions, we're going to all come together and try to dig through some of that data together so that we have a base level of understanding. So that when we go into that second session of small group meetings, we can focus on what that data means rather than what that data is. But what, what does it mean? What, what potentials are there? What opportunities exist for our congregation to do more for our community? The third session is going to focus on what it means to be missional and how the discoveries from our first two sessions might be applied to our congregation as we become a missional-driven church. And then the final session will be focused on discerning our future story based on the conversations, reflections, and learning from the previous three sessions. But that's not the end. Following the conclusion of the four session meetings, the small group leaders are going to come back together and compile the information from all of the meetings. And together, we're going to try to funnel that down into a single report, a single story. We'll share that with the congregation. Action items will be brought to the board. So again, I encourage you to be present, to be a part so that you are included, your voice is included. Even there, that's not the end of the story. And this, to me, was the most reassuring part of our trainings this weekend. Our future story is not the end of this process. Once we have developed a future story, our coach and facilitator, Reverend Kathleen Moore, is going to work with us to create a capacity plan a roadmap for how we are going to realize that future story. She's going to point us towards the resources that we need, whether that's trying to get a loan, whether that's getting training for our members, whether that's getting training for our leadership. She's going to help point us in the direction of the resources that we lack to make that vision a reality. I started off by saying this weekend has not been relaxing. And it's, it's more than that, though. This weekend, I had to make some really hard choices and sacrifices because I'm, I'm human and I can't do everything. And I knew that this church needed me here for this. We all do that. We all prioritize our time. Yesterday, my choices made me miss two soccer games, which was a bummer. One was a win. One was a tie. The tie was for the team that has only won a single game and in the last year and a half. Sadie called it birthday luck because remember it was her birthday. <laughs> I made the difficult decision to miss those games though so I could be here and train with our other leaders and fill a role that might normally be filled by our pastor. We are welcoming an interim pastor in November and that's great. But I plan to be here throughout the rest of this process because he doesn't know us the way I do. And so while certainly there are going to be places that he can step up, there are going to be spots where I'm going to stick around because I think he's going to need that extra support and context. We're all busy people. I personally have worked hard to kind of call that from my vocabulary, though. It's so easy when people say, how are you doing, to reply with, eh, busy. <sighs> but I don't want to sound inaccessible. I, the reality is I'm married, I'm a working parent, I have four children right now between 9 and 15. We're balancing soccer, cheerleading, marching band, harp lessons, a school board campaign, not to mention two full-time jobs that don't exactly fit into an 8 to 5 box. But that's the reality of a lot of people right now. Busy has kind of become our culture's default. Most jobs don't fit in an 8 to 5 box anymore. Extracurricular activities for kids have exponentially increased, and children are engaged in more than they ever used to be. We're all busy. What does this have to do with new beginnings? 
Well, there are more difficult conversations to come than just the ones that take place in our small group sessions. We each need to have conversations in our own homes, not just about the capacity of our congregation, but our own personal capacities. I think about uh, how our congregation wanted to increase its investment in loaves and fishes last year, but we didn't really consider what our capacity was for doing that. Loaves and fishes needs night monitors for their residential program. A lot of us are really too old to be going out at night, and a lot of us have kids and can't leave them home alone. We didn't really have the capacity to support loaves and fishes in the way we thought we wanted to. It's okay. We make mistakes. We're learning. But we really need to take a second look at that through this New Beginnings program. What is our capacity? And when I say that, I, I mean personally, too. Phrases like you guys or we all get tossed around in board meetings and conversations in the hallway quite often. But there's no personal ownership in those phrases. We each need to take that moment and reflect on what we ourselves are able to give and what we are each able to give up. Because transformation is more than just a process of letting go. It's also a process of subtraction. Instead of asking, what more can I do for the church? Just ask, how much? To contribute to the congregation's transformation, I know my family is going to have deep conversations about what we can do, maybe what we're willing to give up to make space for church work, but also what we want to give up for. Personally, I kind of hope that my kids give up YouTube. <laughs> I'd be all right if they decided that was one thing they could live without. <laughs> but in all seriousness, maybe our church's future doesn't include a praise band. It would break my heart. But if I'm giving up praise band for something that means even more to me, then maybe I can let that go. Or maybe it doesn't mean giving up praise band, but maybe praise band meets on Tuesdays in a park instead of Sunday mornings in here. I don't know. Our trainer told us about one congregation that on fifth Sundays, you know how the calendar, sometimes you get five Sundays in a month. On fifth Sundays, they don't have a typical worship service. Instead, they use those days to plan and carry out their missional work. There's no sermon that day. They do small group stuff. They work on logistics and, and work on making sure that their mission is being carried into the community. It's another option. The possibilities are endless if we're willing to be open to them. Jesus said everything is possible to those who believe. We're on this new beginnings journey because we do believe and that we can do more for our community. We have chosen to invest in this process with open minds and open hearts. It's going to take commitment. It's going to take sacrifice. It's going to take patience. It's going to take focus. I'm never going to give you up, and I'm never going to let you down. <laughs> I, I made a promise, sorry. <laughs> and I'm hopeful that each of you will do the same. If we trust each other, if we trust the journey, and if we trust in God to guide us, we too can have a new beginning. Let us pray. <laughs> Holy Spirit, this is hard work. But we do it because we know how important it is that everyone feels your love. We ask that you continue to be with us, to guide us, to keep us strong, to keep us brave, to keep us patient, and to keep us focused. We are here, we are listening, and we are ready for this journey. In your name we pray. Amen. Oops, sorry. <laughs> All right. And now we are going to sing a hymn, and I've forgotten the number. I apologize. <laughs> 88, if we trust in God to guide us. Thank you. 
it's prayer time now, so please pray with me. Loving God, I did not know what to say for prayer time today. But when I picked up my hymnal, it fell open to There is a Balm in Gilead, which says, If you cannot preach like Peter, if you cannot pray like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus and say he died for all. And in doing that, God, we know that you and your love are here with us through uncertain times, and we know that you are with those that we pray for today. As we lift up the Burton family as Eli recovers in the hospital from a surprise illness, and prayers also for Penny as she recovers from back surgery. And together we pray, our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now um, you can stay seated for the communion hymn, The Church of God in Every Age, number 475. Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Dear Lord, as we are about to partake of communion, we remember that you are feeding us spiritually and physically. 
we ask that we will be worthy of that and that we can pass that on in your love. Amen. God watch between us until we meet one another again. Now please join us in singing In the Bulb There is a Flower, number 638. And please stand if you are I'll able. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 